Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice, where I am slowly dying inside. It's bleak, y'all. I haven't been properly caring for my musical soul, by which I mean I haven't been feeding it enough Dio. Ronnie James Dio is to me one of the greatest singers regardless of genre, and I am so excited to finally get to listen to today's song. Let's get to it. Live on stage, recorded sometime before that by Name Eludes Me. Well, the song is called <laughs> Mistreated, this one. That sounds like we're getting into the meat of the song now. And this was just, I'm guessing, a, a somewhat improvised intro by Richie Blackmore. Uh, I love so many of the sections of that. I, like He just, <sighs> I love the way that he'll let there be some space and then wind you up. And, and there's so many fun ways that he'll make it move faster or move higher in ways that I didn't know were, were possible. And Richie Blackmore is just, he seems like such an incredible person. He's gone to lots of different places and different bands, right? Uh, this song, I believe, was originally written for Deep Purple, and then Richie Blackmore ended up leaving that band, and and then was in Rainbow with Dio. So I think that this song was originally sung by David Coverdale, who I've just started to get into, guys. Uh, and now uh, I am going to hear it for the first time with Dio's vocals. So uh, let's keep going. It's almost swampy. Ridiculous. <laughs> the moment he starts singing, I, I feel like I have several different jaws that just keep dropping. Part of that is because his sustain is glorious. I, I, I always say to opera singers these days, if they want to get some extra inspiration outside of opera, go listen to Dio. He sustains his notes like an opera singer. He just keeps feeding it all the goodness to keep that amazing sound going. His vibrato is glorious. It is so even. It is smooth. He uses it in such an expressive way. I love hearing the way he like very slowly chews through his words. Man, there's so much that's glorious about his sound. 
the, the moment he started here, I was just like, oh gosh, oh, I feel more alive already. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back to his entrance. Like, until the very last moment that he finishes singing, he is feeding it so much energy. A lot of times people let their energy drop as it gets to the end of the phrase. They don't keep their audience engaged like he does. It's almost like, yes, the sound is going like this the whole time, but Dio is going like this the whole time. It's just, it's thrilling. Okay, one more time, one more time. <laughs> I love that. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I was just, I, like, I feel like I'm drooling. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. I'm going to breathe for a little bit. We're going to go back. We're going to listen to it some more. We're going to drool some more. It is freaking fantastic. The, it's, it's not just that he can sustain well. It's that he continues and continues and continues to sustain well. His line is like this the whole time. Even when he breathes, I feel like he's breathing his audience and it is just gripping, ridiculous. Uh, by the way, I, this is this is earlier deal from what I've heard. Uh, I'll, I've heard a lot of the live recordings from later in life and gosh, he vocally ages so well. It's surprising. So when you hear some of this aggression, like a little edge in the voice, a little, a little gravel that he'll bring in sometimes, just know that he's done that in a very, very good, very smart, very vocally healthy way. And we know that because holy crap, he ages so well. His voice is just freaking pristine. Okay. There's a great chewing. few things in this verse that I want to point out so far that are just more glorious. Uh, when he goes up to the top, it feels so effortless. He just goes up to some higher notes as if they're nothing. There's a certain lightness that he brings to the voice, so it doesn't sound like he's trying to heft up a truck. It's just really, really, really well placed. Uh, also, there's this continual feeling of this sort of up and out that 
there's a a lot of a lot of times when people are sustaining a line and they're coming down, especially if they have uh, an overall richer sound like Dio has, um, when they come down, they'll do something I'll refer to as chunking, where it kind of sounds like the sound gets more swallowed. It kind of goes thunk, 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 thunk. If you're a singer, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. You're like, oh yeah, that feeling, it almost like it feels like it falls back as it's going down. And Dio, even in his hand shapes, in his body shape, when he's singing something, a line is coming down, he has a way of going up. So it sort of trickles down in front. This is a great way to continue that glorious placement, this idea of continuing to give to the audience. It, the sound goes up, it marinates, and then it trickles out this way. So it doesn't have a chance to chunk down. Oh, back a little more. <laughs> He releases up. Right there. Tickled. Oh. Just, can we just take a moment? We're gonna go back and listen to that one more time. Love the instrumental drop there. I I recognize that the lyrics of this are they're sad, but mistreated. Somebody's essentially been in an abusive relationship. Uh, this this guy is uh, but mistreated by a woman. But gosh, it makes me so happy to just have this long, drawn out phrasing. The tempo was slower. It allows him to extend that sound even more. This is just like. It's like audible ecstasy right here. <laughs> wow. So, so delicious. The sound is glorious. Uh, and I think that a lot of times really sad circumstances can be funneled into creating this kind of sound. And it is so cathartic. So uh, if you are ever feeling down, if you go and you sing a song like this that lets you just pour out all of those emotions you'll feel better. I've done it many, many times. A lot of the darker early E times, I, I just took that and channeled it into music and oh my goodness, it makes you feel like a free person again. So. <sighs> What he's doing with his hand there, it's for the audience, but that's also where his voice is going. He's keeping it with this forward momentum. He's keeping that placement. A lot of times if you think about placing your voice, it will actually cause all of these little tiny intricate muscles to adjust, to create resonance that goes in that direction. He does that with his hands. Dimash also does that with his hands a ton. He like does like all this kind of word painting. Um, so he's doing that. And you see that sometimes he's also going up. And that's what I mentioned with the ends of phrases, the way it still is continuing to go up and trickle out. He actually shows that with his hands here. <laughs> I like that. I've been losing, losing low. Baby, I've been losing. Look at that. Oh, You 
you have to have such good gut connection to sustain like that. And that that alternation between that that half step and the pitch there, it just it felt almost like a whale coming out. It was glorious. Okay, one more time on that and then we'll keep going. Oh, cool. I have got to learn guitar. These sounds are just so awesome. I, I love I love hearing how so many instrumentalists have pushed guitar limits. And I've been really exploring this on the channel. It's been so much fun. I have to say, I don't think I appreciated Richie Blackmore enough early on. Uh, and that's because, first of all, my, my bread and butter is voice. Piano, I started on piano actually, but uh, voice. I'm just like mega uber voice nerd been doing it all my life in various different uh, career paths. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I am obsessed with voice. I'm becoming obsessed with guitar and it's fairly new. But when I first heard them, it was just Dio that stuck out. I, it's Dio that I'm super obsessed with. And when you have this kind of incredible voice before I really attuned to how awesome guitar is in rock music, Dio, I think, overshadowed Richie Blackmore for me. And uh, and that's on me. I think it's also just part of this journey that I've been going on in the charismatic voice. It's been so amazing to discover this music often through your recommendations. And uh, and now I'm glad that I get to come back and, and just appreciate Richie Blackmore some more. Back one more time. <laughs> Whoa, what is that thing? That almost sounds like an Australian instrument. That little wobble back and forth that he was just doing really echoed the the oscillation that Dio did just before the section started. There. Oh. I wonder what he's doing with his hand when he shakes it off like that. He does his, he has definite layers to the sound he's creating right now with some of these sort of screeches, these scratches that are higher, um, pinches almost, and then a melody that is building up on the bottom. It's very mournful. Hmm. Definitely had some Eastern flavor in there. One of the things that I've uh, come to appreciate more about guitar is when there's this beautiful, almost singable melody. And there are times in this when Richie seems to really start to draw that out. It almost has words we could put to this melody that he just played. We'll go back and play it again. Um, but then I like having sort of a swarm of sound and he mixes that in. It's almost like He's orchestrating on the guitar, just using one instrument, but creating tons of different instrumental sounds from it. Let's go back to here. Hmm. 
sounds haunted there. Ooh. Yeah, jump in the video there. <laughs> like a neoclassical feel. What? So at this point, your, your drums and the rest of your rhythm, it's just dropped out, right? They're relying just on the audience and uh, uh, Richie's sort of in built-in metronome. That's super scary because audiences are not that great at actually clapping on time. And when you have a big one, uh, what's on time in front ends up being kind of a wave as it goes back. You have to remember how sound travels and what might sound like it's on time with the people next to you when you're, you know, across the stadium is not the same thing. <laughs> so, ooh. I'm a, I'm a little a uh, little concerned about where the timing is going to go here. Oh. You can even hear that. <laughs> it's risky. into the claps. Ooh, whoa. That is gorgeous. That was beautiful. Oh man. What a stunning like that that melody that he just created there. <sighs> They're really it does feel classical in so many ways. That's why I said neoclassical, you know, there's a, an entire movement of uh, music composition that sort of returns to classical roots at one point. Uh, and that's why I was referencing that, but it also has every now and this, then this sort of like Arabic feel to it. Um, I'm really talking about the scale here that he's using. Uh, but the, oh, I think it also has to do with sort of the straightforward rhythms. I feel like this is something I play on the piano. Okay, I'm going back quite a ways. That was so beautiful. And very impressive how he keeps his own metronome going. That feels Beethoven to me. <laughs> oh. Let's run it in trends. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> oh. They ramp up really well from here. Like, 
that is so primal. There's so much connection to his gut to make this sound. Wow. Wow. I love the way it just, it feels like this holler. <sighs> like this, this, it was a, it's like a vomiting of emotion that just keeps vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. I'm sorry for those of you who really get disturbed by that image. <laughs> Projectile. <gasps> he is so grounded in his body when he makes this sound. It's like just planted there. When we see that kind of singing in opera singers, sometimes we refer to it as park and bark. <laughs> I know, isn't that kind of awful? But that's often what it's called. He parks and barks right there. <laughs> wow. When I hear him sing, my core engages. That's crazy, that's how good it is. One more time. Check out that that teeth and cheek lift on a, I think it's a dam, I believe is the word. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure. So much. So that aval, uh, he has so much teeth, it's lip lift that's happening there. He's getting the teeth involved in the sound. It gives it an extra snarl bite. It's perfect for the expression. Wow, so much left. <laughs> He did such a good job of keeping that energy in that moment. And he had like a, a break, a weep in the inhale at one point too. actually goes sharp as he's going to the end of that word the same way that a lot of times when people start to cry and they're talking their voices start to go a little high and then they crack he does the same thing but in an extended way while singing whoo that was awesome I've been losing, losing. Baby, I've been <laughs> and then the sustain Ugh.
just to be aware of, we have this repeated four pitch rise that's happening in the bass and instruments. It's just like it feels like it's leading up almost like a never ending rise leading up to somewhere. Uh, it wanted to make you all aware of that. I'm very consciously aware of it. It's, I think, extremely deliberate in the songwriting. It's to build us up to something. Perfect example of that lift up. He doesn't. He doesn't ever. It seemed like actually. Well, he probably does every now and then for add a bit of variety. But his habitual, good habitual cutoff of a note is to actually lift it up, give it out and up. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> Wow. Hey. That's him uh, singing in his falsetto. That super haunting tone. It's it's falsetto. It's beautiful. I love that. Uh, you actually don't get to hear very much of Dio singing and using that sound. That's that's gorgeous. Huh. Nice upper harmony there. Ooh. so many shivers right now. Oh, this is, it is so beautifully like heartfelt and it's not, it, it feels like he's giving everything up, but at the same time it feels inner and like he's letting us in on this paint. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, I love the way he plays with diphthongs and even adds diphthongs where they aren't normally there. I love the way that he has cascaded the energy of the instrumental and then them dropping all out, he's taken it all in himself to deliver this perfect moment. He doesn't let it dissipate, instead he charges up with it. I've lost my mind, I'm losing control. I'm spinning round, round, round. Lord. I misplaced my soul. Such gorgeous pitch, too. Oh, and the way he goes sharp there is amazing. <sighs> More? I've been losing my.
Wow. That is such a powerful ending. One more time. I love the way he drops super low here. Sounds operatic. Wow. I personally, right now, I'm feeling very well treated because there's some Dio back in my life. Y'all, it has been way too long since I featured Dio on this channel, and I regret that. I love Dio. I love analyzing his voice. We cannot love it enough. And if you want to see some more analysis of Dio, you can check out this playlist right here. May you fall more in love with music every day.